So in the last video, we had covered fully defining sketches, but in this video, let's make some real solids and let's explore even more efficient ways to sketch. Here we go. We have been talking a whole lot about sketching lately, so let's make a solid. And as we do, maybe we can throw in a few new sketch features as well. Let's make an I-beam that would be used in, say, large structures. I'll activate a 2D sketch on the XY plane and start, of course, with a line. I'll make a horizontal line that is below my x-axis. And I'll sketch out a simple I-beam. Oh, that, that looks pretty good. I, of course, this would be the halfway point of the I-beam. And so I'll give that half of the distance that I would. Let's say that the I-beam is planned to be something like 18 inches tall. So I'll make it nine inches since I've modeled half of it here. I'll also use a vertical constraint and make sure that this endpoint here is vertical to the origin. I'll also use a horizontal constraint to make sure that this point is horizontal with the origin. Uh, how wide would I like this I-beam to be? Of course, I'm going from the center plane of the I-beam over to this point. And so let's go with something like seven inches. And how thick would I like the I-beam to be? Let's go with something like one inch here. And because this is, say, a halfway, the origin is the halfway point, I'll go half the thickness and say 0.5. All right, so you may be wondering, how is this an I-beam if I've made four lines? But uh, I think we can turn this into an I-beam. And the way that we can do is with a huge time saver known as Sketch Mirror. I'll select this mirror. And for figures to mirror, I'll select mirror everything with a box select. And then with my mirror axis, I'll choose it here. And there you can see a preview that we've made another half of the I-beam. Maybe I'll select everything, select mirror again. And I'll choose my mirror axis one more time. And there we were able to make a mirror in very few steps. So I think the sketch mirror is a simple function and also a huge time saver. We didn't have to go and sketch all those lines and add a whole bunch of constraints. And if I want to change my thickness to maybe 1.25 here, that works too. So these are still linked to the original, which I think is a wonderful feature. Perhaps I'd like to round some edges. And to do that, I'll choose Fillet right here. And Fillet, of course, is something that creates a constant radius arc to help round some edges out. An astute viewer would say I could have done my Fillet first and then mirrored to save features, and that is absolutely true. So this is part of design intent of when we go through making sketches, perhaps we can save some effort by mirroring everything all at once instead of adding features after a mirror. This should be a satisfactory sketch for me. So let's work on making this into a solid. And for that, I'll simply exit my sketch. And then of all these tools to create and edit solids, I will choose the first one, which is extrude. And of course I have several options in my extrude. This window comes up and I can choose the depth to extrude. I can type in, say, a distance of 10, and it will extrude 10 inches. Maybe something like 500, if I wish to have a long I-beam. But for viewing purposes, I'll probably go a bit shorter, like 200. So I can just simply click the box that says OK after specifying my depth. But I also have an option to reverse distance, and I can have several options here if I also wish. Today, I'll also mention that we can go mid-plane if we want to go 100 on one side and 100 on the other side and leave this plane in the middle. That's particularly useful if later on you want to mirror things over the plane. So we'll go ahead and say OK there, and we indeed have an I-beam. Uh, so that is how we can make solids, use sketch fillets, and use sketch mirrors in our modeling. Well, I hope that was enjoyable because when I was first learning CAD, I got really excited to 
do a, an extrude. Felt like I started making real stuff at that point. So join me in the next video where we'll cover even more ground in working with solids. See you then.